Today, we're going to talk about... You know the human body can be compared to a car? If you speed the body too much, the limiter will work, just like in a car. Well, when it comes to machines, you can get rid of the limiter. But what about people? Let's find out. On August 6, 2009, Usain Bolt set a world record at a distance of 100 meters. 9.58 seconds. His speed was 44.72 kilometers per hour. Until then, no one could accelerate to such figures. But why exactly 44 kilometers per hour? Why not 60 or 100? Is it possible to move even faster? And what will happen to the human body if you still manage to break the bolt record? Well, in the 50s of the last century, another man was called the fastest man on earth. Meet John Stapp. In 1954, for the sake of science, Stapp subjected his body to the most severe test. He reached a speed of 1,017 kilometers per hour. It's hard to even imagine it. Well, if we draw an analogy to the sensations that John experienced, then such acceleration is comparable to a frontal car crash into a wall at a speed of more than 100 kilometers per hour. It broke the ground speed record and made Stapp the fastest man on our planet. No ill effects are felt by Colonel Stapp after the fastest ride on Earth. By the way, we owe it to this man that we have seatbelts in our cars. Thanks, mister. Of course, such a test had its consequences. John's eyes were almost bursting, his bones were cracking, and his vision was failing from overload. And of course, his heart was beating like crazy. There's nothing surprising about that. Just imagine the stress experienced by Stapp and his body. But now that we're talking about the heart, I was wondering to what extent can we accelerate it? I mean the heart rate, not separately from a person, of course. One shot of adrenaline will give you a pulse of 220 beats per minute. For comparison, a normal adult heart rate is only 70 to 75 beats. Let's raise the stakes and add 40 cups of coffee. Together with the adrenaline, they'll accelerate your heart to 500 beats per minute. But what if you do the impossible and provide a man with a pulse of 300,000 beats in one second? Blood would flow through the veins 20 times faster than the speed of sound, and that, well, that won't end well. The veins would just burst, and the heart wouldn't be able to start again. The end. But let's say your heart could survive a crazy test like that. Maybe you have a superpower that you didn't know about. It could happen. But what happens next? All the processes in your body will happen much faster because of high metabolism, you'll have to eat and go to the toilet all the time. Literally all the time. At this rate, the body will endure for about two hours, then, well, it must be scary to realize that you only have two hours left to live, but not for everyone. Some people don't feel fear at all. And I'm not talking about Will Smith's character in After Earth. Fear is not real. There's an example closer and more real. Patient SM046 is an American whose personality is kept confidential. This woman has the rarest type of brain damage that has completely deprived her of her sense of fear. It's all about the destroyed amygdala. This small area in the brain helps fear to form. No amygdala, no fear. SM, or as she's called in the newspapers, a woman without fear, was exposed to scary situations many times during the research process. There were a lot of things, snakes, spiders, horror films, various really creepy locations, but she wasn't scared at all. The only thing that could frighten this woman was carbon dioxide. No, she has no phobia, but when she inhales it, the SM's body thinks that she's suffocating. And this, in turn, scares the survived parts of the brain. But this is a very different story. However, SM is not the only one whose brain is strangely broken down. Do you remember Hodor? Hodor? Hodor. 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 Not that he had a very diverse vocabulary, but he had a really big heart. In fact, such a peculiarity isn't invented by scriptwriters. These are the real consequences of brain damage. To be more precise, the problem should be on the left in the frontal lobe. This place is called the Broca's area, and it's responsible for speech. If the area is damaged, the speech is damaged too, and the person becomes, well, a Hodor. Like, for example, this man. How many children do you have? Tonto, tonto. Tonto. Can you count that out for me? Tonto, 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 tonto. Yes, he understands absolutely everything he's told, but he can't answer. Instead of all normal, usual words, there's only tono tono. Why have I told so much about the brain, and what does human capability have to do with it? Yes, our brain can break down on its own, and we will become like Hodor, or 
lose the feeling of fear, or, well, there are a lot of options. But what if I tell you a completely unrealistic thing? What if people can break their own brains to become, for example, geniuses? For a long time, Jason Padgett lived a very ordinary life. He worked in a furniture store, often hung out at parties and drank a lot, and of course he had nothing to do with mathematics. But on the Friday evening of September 13, 2002, everything changed. Padgett was attacked by unknown people, hit hard on the head, and robbed. As a result, he got a concussion. But as soon as Padgett got home, his behavior began to change quickly and radically. Padgett started drawing fractals, then went to college to study math. His life has completely changed. Today, Jason is an internationally recognized mathematical genius, and I don't exaggerate his coolness. He knows how to visualize formulas. It's an incredible rarity, almost an obsession, and all thanks to an unexpected injury caused by random people. You know, I don't think anyone would consider a blow to the head a working scheme to become a genius, but just don't repeat anything like that. It's better to conduct a little experiment. Imagine that you fell asleep and woke up, not in the morning, but 27 years later. What would you feel? Other than shock, of course. In fact, this is not Futurama. Leela, you're awake. Of course I'm awake. You're in the best coma I've ever seen. The doctor said you'd never wake up. But a really creepy experience, and history knows such examples. A woman named Manira Abdullah was only 32 when she had a terrible accident, and her four-year-old son was with her. She suffered a serious brain injury and went into a coma. The woman was put into a hospital in the UAE, then transferred to London. But the doctors couldn't do anything in her case. After a while, Manira was returned home. Then there was another hospital, several operations, but the coma didn't stop. Pretty typical story. There are thousands of them. But one day, Manira moved, and then she called her son by name. 27 years later, the woman suddenly came to her senses, was able to speak again, and even restored her ability to sit. Wow. I mean, wow. There are very few cases when people come back to consciousness after several years of coma. And even if this happens, the recovery can be long. So you can only wish Manira good health. 27 years? If you think about it, that's just a hell of a lot. And how long can a coma last? Anyone can live in a coma for many years. Their heart will beat and the brain stem will function, but they'll need food and constant care. The length of life will depend on the amount of care, plus several other factors, the causes of the coma, age, diseases. It's said that most often coma patients die from some kind of infection, but if there isn't any infection, you could live really long in this condition. The body will grow old and life will pass by. On the other hand, it's better than death because there's always a chance to return. But on the other hand, one day you'll wake up in a changed world and realize you've been unconscious for many years. I mean, that's a serious challenge. What would you choose? Write the answer in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. We'll see you later.